Hello and welcome everyone. Today our topic of discussion is gangliocide antibody panel. But first we understand what is gangliocide. Gangliocytes are the glycosphingolipids highly abundant in nervous system. Gangliocytes are present and concentrated on the cell surfaces. Gangliocytes are enriched in cell membrane microdomains also called lipid rafts and play important role in modulation of membrane proteins and ion channels in cell signaling and in the communication among cells. A gangliocyte is a molecule composed of glycosphingolipid which is ceramide plus oligosaccharide with one or more sialic acid which is n acetyl neuramic acid also called NNA linked on sugar chain. More than 60 gangliocytes are known which differ from each other mainly in the position and number of NNA residues. Now let's learn how the gangliocytes are named. The G at the beginning of each gangliocyte name indicate they belonging to ganglio series of glycosphingolipids. A, M, D, T and Q indicate presence of 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 salic acid residues respectively. Here A for absent, M for mono, D for di, T for tri and Q for quadruple. Let's see some common example of gangliocytes. Gangliocyte containing 1 NNA is GM1, GM2, GM3. Gangliocyte containing 2 NNA are GD1A, GD1B, GD2, GD3. Gangliocyte containing 3 NNA are GT1B, GT3. And lastly, gangliocyte containing 4 NNA is GQ1. Before going into the test, First, we learn what is the neuropathy. In neuropathy, patient have muscle weakness, variable sensory disturbances like loss or exaggerated sensation including pain and autonomic involvement including sweat, abnormalities, gastrointestinal dysfunction and lightheadedness on standing. There are mainly four type of immune mediated neuropathies are seen. First is multifocal motor neuropathy. Second is multifocal acquired demyelinating sensory and motor neuropathy. Third is multifocal chronic immune demyelinating polyradiculo neuropathy. And fourth is Gulin Bear syndrome. What is the immune mediated neuropathy? When body's own immune system generates autoantibodies against this gangliocyte, then these autoantibodies can cause damage to neuronal tissue. And this leads to various immune mediated neuropathies. Let's understand first. First is multifocal motor neuropathy. It is a purely motor neuropathy without sensory loss that is characterized by progressive asymmetric muscle weakness and atrophy of limb without sensory problems. It is asymmetrical. It affects distal more than proximal and upper limb more than lower limb. The GM1 is present in the greater concentration in peripheral motor nerves as compared to sensory nerves. So, serum IgM antibodies to this GM1 are present in majority of patients, 50% of patients. The treatment of this multifocal motor neuropathy is intravenous immunoglobulin IVIG. In absence of anti-GM1 antibodies, the pathophysiology of motor nerve dysfunction is controversial. Anti-GM1 antibodies are not specific for multifocal motor neuropathy. They are also seen in acute motor axonal neuropathy variant of Gullien-Bayer syndrome. 
Now let's understand the multifocal acquired demyelinating sensory and motor neuropathy. It should be suspected in patients who have weakness and loss of sensation primarily in one arm or leg which progresses slowly over several months or years. It is asymmetric, it affects distal more than proximal and it affects upper limb more than lower limb. The sensory deficit is multifocal. It is associated with reduced or absent reflexes. The CSF protein is elevated. The abnormal nerve conduction studies are found in MAD SAM and it is not associated with anti-GM1 antibody positivity. The treatment of MAD SAM includes corticosteroids like prednisolone. Third is multifocal chronic immune demyelinating polyradiculoneuropathy. It is called CIDP. CIDP is characterized by symmetrical proximal plus distal weakness, large fiber symmetrical sensory loss. It is associated with reduced or absent symmetrical reflex. CSF protein is elevated. Demyelinating changes in the nerve conduction studies or nerve biopsy are found and the treatment includes prednisolone, immunomodulating treatment, plasma exchange and IVIG. Fourth is Gullian Bear syndrome. It is rare but serious post-infectious immune mediated neuropathy. Many infections have been linked with GBS. The most common are gastrointestinal or respiratory illnesses. In Compilobacter jejuni gastrointestinal infection, a lipoligosaccharide present in the outer membrane of bacteria is similar to gangliocytes which are component of peripheral nerves. Therefore, immune response triggered to fight the infection can lead to cross-reaction and it affects the host nerves. The GBS is classified into two primary subtypes. First is demyelinating and second is axonal. The demyelinating form, the acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy is characterized by segmental demyelination of peripheral nerves. A subtype of GBS characterized by primary axonal degeneration with preserved sensory function is known as acute motor axonal neuropathy. The symptoms of GBS are symmetric, ascending, proximal and distal weakness. Reflexes are reduced or absent. Non-length dependent sensory symptoms. Facial diplegia due to involvement of both facial cranial nerve. Dysphagia and respiratory failure due to involvement of glossopharyngeal, vagus and hypoglossal cranial nerve. Dysautonomia. CSF proteins are elevated. IgG of anti-GM1, anti-GD1A, anti-GT1B and anti-GQ1B positive in gangliocyte panel. The treatment is intravenous immunoglobulin and plasma exchange. Now we are discussing about our test which is gangliocyte panel. It is immunoblot test. In the immunoblot, the antigen coated on the membrane are used as a solid phase in order to detect specific antibodies in patient serum. The test performance is either manual, semi or fully automated. If a sample contains specific antibodies, this binds to membrane bound antigen. In the next step, the alkaline phosphatase based antibody which is found in conjugate is added which binds to specific antibodies. The alkaline phosphatase catalyzes a color reaction which subsequently added nitro blue tetrazoleum chloride or 
फाइव ब्रोमो फोर क्लोरो इंडोलाइल फॉस्फेट दे आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एंड बी टी स्लैश बी सी आई पी इफ द स्पेसिफिक एंटीबॉडीज आर प्रेजेंट इन पेशेंट सैम्पल अ डार्क लाइन अपियर्स एट अ रिस्पेक्टिव एंटीजन पोजिशन द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ रिजल्टिंग स्टेनिंग इन इज प्रपोर्शनल टू एंटीबॉडी कंसनट्रेशन इन द सैम्पल सो वी कैन ग्रेड प्लस वन प्लस टू प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ बैंड वी फाउंड ऑन द स्ट्रिप द जी एम वन एंटीबॉडी आई जी एम क्लास इज एसोसिएटेड विथ मल्टीफोकल मोटर न्यूरोपैथी एंटी जी एम वन एंटी जी डी वन ए एंटी जी टी वन बी द आई जी जी क्लास ए जी एन एम दिस ऑल आर एसोसिएटेड विथ गुलियन बैर सिंड्रोम एंटी जी क्यू वन बी आई जी 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 इट इज एसोसिएटेड विथ फिशर सिंड्रोम विच इज पार्ट ऑफ गुलियन बैर सिंड्रोम जी डी वन बी आई जी जी एंटीबॉडी इज एसोसिएटेड विथ सेंसरी न्यूरोपैथी This chart shows the detailed evaluation of positivity of both IgG antibody and IgM antibody. So this is in short about ganglioside antibody panel and these are the references for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.